So I go to the bathroom for two minutes, and when I come back, the characters are doing this. <laughs> it almost feels rude to interrupt. You guys can finish when I'm done making the video. Hello, everybody. Today I want to talk about the start of the round. I think this is an important topic, especially these days. Damage is so high right now that if you mess up and get launched in that initial scramble, you really can lose the entire round right away. I want to say that I got the idea for making this video when I was uh, watching Anakin. In case you've missed it, the very talented pro player Anakin has started making these great theoretical videos on his YouTube recently, uh, talking about movement and stuff like that. So you should definitely go watch it and uh, subscribe to him. But one video that I was watching, um, a player sent him a match that they wanted feedback on. It was this uh, Huarong player, and he opened the start of the first round with a big armor move like this. And Anakin just stopped the video and said, first of all, don't do that. And it was interesting because it got me thinking about how people um, develop these bad habits at the start of the round of being too predictable of being uh, too aggressive. So I want to talk about how to strategize when the round is about to start. And then when you become a little bit more advanced, how to fold things like uh, predictions and uh, character knowledge into that. First of all, if an experienced player tells you that you should not uh, attack at the beginning of the round, does that mean that it's always a bad idea to open uh, aggressively? And I don't think that's the case at all. It can be a very good idea, but when you attack at the beginning of the round, it should probably be because you have some information that you're basing a prediction on. You think you know what the opponent will do and you're trying to capitalize. That can be a great idea, even though it's risky. Uh, but that's very different from having, you know, two or three canned options or attacks that you like to use as round openers and then just rotating them, you know. Okay, this one didn't work, so I'm just going to go to the next and so on. Um, what you need to keep in mind is even though your opponent might not have played you before, they might have played hundreds and hundreds of people who use your character. And I think we're less unique as players than we like to think, and so your opponent might have... A very strong inclination of what you might do even though uh, they haven't played you specifically before so for example when you're playing against Negan we've got Negan here um, he likes to open up rounds with this big armor move uh, right here which can seem like a good idea because if I attack and uh, he armors through something then he's gonna launch me for mass uh, massive damage but if I'm one of those opponents where I'm going to be a little bit more uh, careful and calm and just watch him, then I can, of course, punish this really, really hard. In the case of this move, I can even uh, launch punish it, right? So it's a huge risk and uh, it can be a, a big, big mistake. I think uh, a great go-to round opener that anybody can use, no matter what level you play at, if you're a complete beginner or you're playing in high-level competition, uh, a great place to start, in my opinion, is just a single backdash. Um, a great Tekken classic, you know, single backdash into whiff punish and stuff like that. Mind you, I'm not talking about uh, like Korean backdash cancelling like this when you're creating a lot of space with multiple backdashes. That's an advanced movement technique that you're probably going to learn later down the line. Uh, and it can be uh, important as well. But a single backdash anybody can do because it's just back back. Uh, on the controller or the pad and then you can even hold back and you can keep walking backwards create some space and make sure that you're still blocking there are a couple of reasons this is so effective first of all if i do a back dash here you can tell how much space there is between me and the opponent now there are very few attacks that he can do that are going to reach me at this distance and so if my opponent swings into this space that i've created then it's a good opportunity for a whiff punish um, and that is not only great because you get to launch the opponent, it's also an extremely healthy habit uh, to get into as a player because creating space with movement and then punishing uh, players who are attacking into the space you created um, is one of those strong, healthy, reliable, good Tekken strategies, you know, a mentality that you want to have. So I think it's very uh, good to get into that habit as a player. But even though it might seem really cool to get to launch your opponent at the beginning of the round, maybe it's not the main priority right away. Maybe a more important thing to worry about is to not die. And backdashing and watching your opponent is a great way to make sure that you don't die uh, when the round starts. If you're going to start attacking into one another and you get into these uh, ag aggressive vortexes, then yeah, the, the round might be over before it even started. 
Uh, so I think do a backdash, but while you're doing the backdash, don't watch your character, watch your opponent. You should have a sense of how far your character travels and where they're going to be after a backdash. You know what's happening on your side of the screen, the mystery, and what you really want to see is what's going to happen with your opponent. And so uh, watch them, and if you see them swing, uh, try and capitalize with a punish or something else. Maybe they just backdash away as well, and now you can uh, you know, start moving around start um, building that bank of knowledge and engaging their energy and trying to feel what kind of a player they are. And then you can start making those accurate predictions of what they're gonna do next. So if I'm playing online and I run into a new opponent, the first thing I'm gonna do is look at their character and think about, okay, what do I need to uh, be careful about in this matchup? A good example is if I'm playing Elisa um, and I run into Eddie or Kazia, I always remind myself that if I finish this string, they can actually launch, punish that. So be very careful about that. You know, I make this, these little mental notes and then I try and decide how I wanna open the round. And if I, you know, one thing you can do is you can look at your opponent's highest rank, right? So if I see that they, they are, you know, taking God Prime um, and they're probably gonna be pretty advanced players, then I'm most likely gonna show them some more respect at the beginning of the first round. Backdash a bit, you know, try and uh, get a feel for what they wanna do. Uh, but if I get a sense that they really like to attack, then maybe at the beginning of the next round, I think they're gonna swing. I might, you know, try and punish them somehow. A great opener that I love with Elisa uh, when I think opponents are going to swing is to uh, jump back into dive kicks. And that's very, very similar to the uh, single back dash into whiff punish that we talked about earlier. It's basically the same concept, but with this character, I just have this option of jumping into powerful moves instead. And that means that I can also go over lows and I have a lot of float time here, you know, a lot of um, opportunities to, to watch the opponent and uh, make my decision. But let's try and come up with an example here of uh, how you can build these sort of um, uh, layers of predictions when you're playing Tekken, especially at the start of the round. So say I'm, I've run into a Negan player online and we've played a couple of rounds already, maybe two. And I have the sense that this is a really aggressive player. He's not showing a lot of respect. He likes to attack and press a lot of buttons. He uh, typically opens the round uh, with an attack. It can be very dangerous for me to uh, jump back and do my uh, dive kick here that I like because if he's doing, you know, that armor move that he likes, see if we can time this, you can see he's just going to armor straight through it and uh, launch me for massive damage. So that can be a dangerous option to go for. However, say that I've opened one of the previous rounds with a jump back into dive kick. That means that that is living somewhere in my opponent's subconscious or maybe even in his conscious, maybe he's actively thinking, I think my opponent's going to do that jump back into dive kick again. And he's going to try and deal with that specifically. Well, one thing he could do is, for example, he could sidewalk into a whiff punish. And if I'm doing my dive kick now, he's just going to evade it and launch me for really high damage. And so um, I'm usually like trying to think on the fly and, you know, try and come up with an option that's going to cover uh, the, co the few things that I think my opponent might do, you know, a, a really educated guess. So, for example, in this case... Um, I could do a down four. Down four is a, a low that I really like with this character because it has good tracking, it's a counter hit launcher, and it's got good range. So if my opponent is walking to the side, I can catch them with this. If they try the whiff punish, then I can actually uh, counter hit launch it with this low. But it's also true that in Tekken, uh, lows uh, categorically cancel or beat uh, armor moves. So I'm going to counter hit the armor move as well. And so uh, in this case, it might be a, a good opportunity to try this and I might, you know, get a counter hit launch at the beginning of the round. But something that's going to happen every once in a while when you play like this is I'm going to do this low and my opponent's just going to block it because he made a better prediction than I did. Um, or maybe he was predicting something completely different and he got lucky but he blocks my launch punish below and he launches me. And that's always going to be happening. Uh, but I think as long as you're thinking about your choices and you're using what experience and what knowledge you have to make deliberate choices, um, your predictions and your uh, instinct for Tekken is just gonna become more and more uh, sophisticated and you're gonna be right more of the time. Uh, and that's a, a really fun part of playing this game and sort of one of my favorite aspects of the game. It's a Another one of those healthy, fun strategies, but you know, you have these layers where you think the opponent's going to do something, but he might know that you're thinking that, so he's thinking something else, but you might know that 
uh, he knows what you know, and you just keep on building these layers and um, and uh, you know the the reads and everything else, um, and getting this sense of you know the the energy of a player is is, is really important and a fun part of this game that I really love. So. Those are uh, some tips on how to uh, think and philosophize at the beginning of a round. I hope it was uh, reasonably uh, interesting to watch. Thank you so much for coming to this video. Don't forget to go and subscribe to Anakin. Amazing player, amazing channel, really good content. Uh, thank you again, and I'll see you guys very soon.